People who pass by more fast food restaurants on the way to work have a higher likelihood of being obese. And if this is true, I blame the drive-thru because the drive-thru exploits quirks of human psychology. Customers have been flocking to drive-thrus like never before. So obesity rates are on the rise. New research shows drive-thru service has become the meat of the business. Sometimes you really don't want to leave your house. To be able to leave your house and not get out the car helps. An alarming trend. Now it's not the drive throughs fault that we all find convenience, the path of least resistance and instant gratification so attractive. But my Modern drive throughs are so much more than that. How may I help you? Modern drive throughs use behavioral science and something called dark nudging to manipulate you into eating more fast food. And when you pair hyper palatable, salty, sugary, fatty fast food with the insanely convenient drive through that's been literally optimized to make you make bad decisions, it's truly no wonder that some people just can't resist. Like these companies are studying the way our brains make decisions. How you choose between saying yes to fast food or saying no to fast food and then using this data to modify our behavior in a way that benefits them. And uh, if you haven't noticed, this is happening from every angle these days, whether it's TikTok or Twitter or food corporations or your governments. Everybody is investing big bucks into getting you to behave the way they want you to behave. And with drive throughs the manipulation begins before you even hit the parking lot. But before we get into it, a message from today's sponsor. Okay, it's just a quick message from me. I'm thinking of starting a kind of newsletter. I do so much research and writing on so many different topics, but a lot of it never makes it here to YouTube, so I thought a newsletter could be fun. Nothing formal, just messages from me in your inbox that you might enjoy. I don't really have a specific plan right now, it honestly could be months before I send anything, but I just wanted to see if any of you guys would be into it. So if you're interested in getting emails from me directly, click the link below and join the list. Thanks for your support, and now back to the video. Many people don't realize the extent to which the drive through is fast food. Fast food restaurants didn't take off until American families started driving everywhere, and then fast food became this like natural natural extension of the sort of on-the-go lifestyle. As people spread out from the cities to the suburbs, everyone coming to a restaurant would be coming in a car. And so if you're a restaurant, you needed some way to deal with this. First came the drive-in. You know in old movies, those diners with waitresses on roller skates taking your order from the parking lot? The drive-in was a whole event, a social meeting place, a date night, or fun family outing. But then came the drive through which was kind of the opposite. No parking, no waiting, no hanging out, get your food, and then get back to whatever you were in the middle of doing. Fast forward to today, the drive through is so heavily tied to the fast food experience that 47% of Americans would refuse to use a fast food restaurant if it didn't have a drive through according to a poll from earlier this year. Think about that. That means that if the insanely convenient drive through lane wasn't an option, many, if not most, fast food sales would never even happen. And immediately you can see the power of convenience. I've talked about this a lot in some of my other behavioral science videos, but our brains are extremely biased toward convenience in the path of least resistance. Like back in the 1950s when drive throughs were originally invented, they were an instant hit. People immediately flocked to them, so much so that drive throughs became this like cultural phenomenon at the time. Like look at all the stuff they tried to turn into a drive through The drive through liquor store, the drive through laundromat, dairy store. These drive through dairy stores are so convenient, even I enjoy shopping there. The drive through real estate firm. Okay, this last one deserves a really close look. 1958 Ford drive through sale. Just look at this little map. Look at this. Look at the path. Like this looks like an absolute nightmare. Drive through today. Anyway, point being, we love the simple, insanely convenient joy of not having to get out of our cars to do stuff. McDonald's website says that they waited until 1975 to open their first drive through but they claim that when they finally did it, it boosted sales at that location by a full 40%. And today, McDonald's says that their drive throughs account for a whopping 70% or more of their total US revenue. And if you ask yourself, well, why is it that the drive through is so insanely popular? The answer is the power of convenience. I've talked about this before on my video about how convenience ruined breakfast, but essentially it's not just that we're lazy, it's that our brains are wired to value convenient options. Behavioral science tells us that if you want to make a behavior happen more often, make it 
easy. The more convenient it is for a behavior to occur, the more likely it is that the behavior will occur. And the original fast food drive throughs of the 1950s kind of just accidentally stumbled upon this behavioral gold mine. They didn't realize at the time that their insane success was largely due to the fact that drive throughs were appealing to our brain's biases. But today's drive throughs are no accident. They are actively and intelligently exploiting these biases. Let's imagine the typical drive through situation. You're driving along on your way home from work. You're hungry, you're tired, you're feeling a little stressed from the rush hour drive, and you're anxious to finally get home and wind down from a long day. Unbeknownst to you at that exact moment, you are the perfect unsuspecting victim for the drive through Why? Because all of these characteristics are risk factors for impulsive behavior. The brain makes decisions in basically two different ways, either rationally and thoughtfully or impulsively and mindlessly. Something called system one and system two thinking. So when you buy something on impulse, it means that you did so without any prior plans or intentions to do so. And importantly, without rationally considering that choice. All of a sudden you're overcome with this desire or impulse to take action, to seize that instant gratification. And before you know it, you do. This is behaving impulsively. And if you're thinking, that's totally me, I really gotta stop doing that. You are not the only one. Apparently, 58% of trips to limited service restaurants, aka drive throughs are already impulsive to begin with. I took this stat from a website called QSR Magazine, which is like basically a magazine written for fast food franchisees and like drive through operators. And it's full of tips on how to turn your drive through into the money making machine it could be. Anyway, why is this important? Well, because when a behavior is impulsive, it's really hard to control. Because it's not a conscious, rational, choice, it's instead an automatic mindless reaction to the environment. And you behaving automatically and mindlessly is the main goal of a dark nudge. If you've never heard the term dark nudge before, I should probably explain like a regular nudge first. The definition of a nudge is an indirect means of influencing behavior toward a desired action. More specifically, it's about redesigning the environment in a way that it subtly takes you down a specific path or guides you to a specific choice. A dark nudge, on the other hand, is more aggressive. It exploits your cognitive biases in order to change your behavior against your best interests. Which is exactly what's happening when corporations are trying to get you hooked on their products by any means necessary. Many drive through restaurants have been completely redesigned with the goal of activating your more impulsive side in mind. I learned from QSR that the drive through is first divided into zones, and then each zone is optimized to influence your decision making. The entry zone is all about making it as easy as possible for your car to make it from the street to the drive through And fast food companies do this by literally mapping out your parking lot experience and then placing signage and arrows at any potential confusion points. This might seem small, but the point is to remove any possible friction from your journey to their cash register. Because friction is another behavioral science principle. And this principle says that any friction at all will cause less of a behavior to occur on average. As you get closer to the drive through window you enter, the pre-order zone. These days, a lot of fast food companies are switching to dual lane drive throughs where the one lane is split in two. But a lot of people online have noticed that this seems really pointless because ultimately there's usually only one person taking orders. This guy even uploaded a whole aerial shot to show that the dual lane thing doesn't make any sense. Now, maybe the main purpose of the dual lane drive through is just to make sure that the line doesn't end up creeping out onto the road. Or maybe it's another psychology trick meant to make the line appear shorter than it really is. One Psychology Today article even called it the illusion of convenience. Fast food drive through lanes are a trap. Unless the line is already long and backed up around the curve, you can't see how many cars are ahead of you. Then, once you've placed your order, you're blocked from exiting by the vehicles in front of you, and soon by those behind you. A long lineup of cars would instantly reduce the seductive quality of convenience. This long lineup is a moment of friction. It slows you down a little bit and may make you reconsider, think more about your decision to get fast food, which means people would be switching from impulse mode to rational thinking mode. And remember, the name of the game for fast food companies is to use the environment to trigger impulsive decision making. When QSR Magazine asked a Coca-Cola executive what he recommends on how to sell more product, he had this to say. A way is to ensure that consumers don't do a lot of thinking. 
In other words, thinking gets in the way of their convenience model. So next time you see a dual lane drive through just know that it's basically just a trick to lure you further into their zones. So now that you're fully committed to your decision to eat fast food, being that you're trapped by the cars in front of you and behind you, fast food places utilize the pre-order zone to persuade you to buy more stuff. The strategy here is usually to use their drive through signage to alert you to new or novel items. This is for a few reasons. First off, novelty is just like convenience. It's another thing that we're really biased toward. Novelty bias. Novelty grabs our attention and gets us excited. Our brains love new, novel, shiny things. New, interesting, different options trigger dopamine. So while you might ignore an advertisement for a boring hamburger, you're already aware the chain sells, you are much more likely to pay attention to a new fun item you've never seen there before. Which is certainly why this past year, McDonald's released a new McFlurry pretty well every other month. Right now we have the Trick or Treat McFlurry, before that the Squishmallow McFlurry, the Caramel Popcorn McFlurry, the Strawberry Shortcake McFlurry, and a Christmassy Candy Cane Fudge McFlurry. And of course, novelty is another risk factor for impulsive behavior. On top of that, if you're already in line to eat fast food and if it was a totally impulsive decision like it is for most people, then you may be in the mood to quote unquote treat yourself, which according to this Ipsos poll is one of the major emotional drivers of impulse buys. So if you're already in the mood to treat yourself to fast food, you may think, well, why not just throw on a Grimace shake or a pumpkin spice frosty or a double down hot dog or any of the other insane items that they add to try and grab your attention. It seems that these days, fast food companies are coming out with new novel items all the time. And maybe this is a technology thing, but I can't help but wonder if it's because they've acquired so much more behavioral science now and they know that novelty is a powerful driver of our behavior. Another thing that I think is a purely behavioral trick in the pre-order zone is the fact that at some fast food chains, you can now no longer see the menu until you get right up in front of the menu. I don't know how many places are doing this. I personally don't go to a ton of drive-thrus. I know I probably sound like the ambassador of drive-thrus, in making this video. But I got coffee from a Tim Hortons about a month or so ago. If you've never heard of Tim Hortons, it's the most popular coffee chain by far here in Canada. I personally hate it. I just went because it was like the only one around at that time. For some strange reason, you cannot see their menu until you get right up in front of it. And that's when I discovered they're like anti-glare film or whatever it was on top of the screen. And I'm like, okay, another Tim Hortons fail. Why is it that Starbucks could make a sign that has no issues like this, but Tim Hortons has to get the worst one of all time. But then a few weeks later, I'm researching this video. I go to McDonald's to get an ice cream cone and I notice that they also have these anti-glare or whatever film on top so you can't see the sign until you get right up in front of it. Now I'd expect something like this from Tim Hortons, but not from McDonald's. You know, I'm a McDonald's hater just like out of print but even I recognize that you have to respect what they do and respect their business to some degree because they are truly masterful at what they do. So like I go to McDonald's about five times a week. The people that are running and making decisions with McDonald's are fucking geniuses. And I'm not even kidding you. It is insanely good. It puts everybody else in the fucking dirt. Every move they make is calculated and they are not gonna roll out these signs unless they're making the money somehow. So there must be some advantage, but again, maybe it's not a customer service advantage. Maybe the reason again is to increase the likelihood that you'll behave impulsively. If it's impossible for you to see the menu board until you get right up in front of it, then you're forced to read the menu and make a decision quickly or else hold up the rest of the line. Urgency is another behavioral trigger. And when things feel urgent, studies show that you're much more likely to act out of impulse than think things through. If you're sitting in line coolly contemplating your options and thinking through your decision while you're waiting in line, you're using system two rational thinking. But when things feel urgent, you make snap judgments and you're using system one impulsive thinking, increasing the likelihood that you'll add more to your cart or make a more indulgent choice. Studies have shown that a sense of urgency undermines self-control. So by forcing you into making a quick decision, fast food restaurants may be able to entice you to grabbing a few extra items. So don't be afraid to say, give me a moment. All right, finally, you're about to pull up and place your order. We've reached the order zone and the menu board itself. Once upon a time, drive through venues were just text lists of food items. But today, many of them have had a behavioral science makeover in order to get you to spend more 
and therefore also eat more. You would think that just switching from a print menu to a digital menu wouldn't really be a big deal. But in 2019, McDonald's invested $6 billion into digital signage. And within the first year, they had already reported a 5% increase in US total sales, which like 5% just doesn't sound very impressive. But a McDonald's 5% is a big number considering they serve 25 million people every single day. So what is it about digital menus that's such a moneymaker? Well, first it allows McDonald's total freedom in utilizing choice architecture, which is a behavioral science concept that states that the way you present choices to people influences what they ultimately end up choosing. It turns out that the decisions that you make are affected by the arrangement, layout, order, variety, and context of the way available options are presented to you. And these things can be optimized in order to manipulate what you ultimately end up choosing. And a digital menu board is the literal perfect way to leverage this. Here's fast food menu trick number one. Pay attention next time you hit a drive through to the very first option on the menu you can see. It turns out that for whatever reason, our brains are really biased toward the first option presented to us. Usually this means the upper left of your viewpoint, but for the drive through it's probably somewhere down here based on the view from your window. According to behavioral science, whatever option is presented first will be chosen way more often overall to a scary degree. This is called the primacy effect. It is so powerful that multiple studies have shown that even on election ballots, the first candidate listed will receive extra votes just for being listed first, which has actually led to some states requiring that they make randomization of like the ballot people mandatory. Ballot people. You know what I mean. <laughs> but back to fast food menus. Knowing the primacy effect, fast food companies can nudge you into purchasing more profitable items just by showing you them first. Now the next trick is also crazy simple, but extremely powerful. Starbucks was lagging behind in the drive through department, so they spent millions of dollars conducting behavioral research and analyzing their customers, hoping to increase sales. However many dollars of research later, the biggest discovery they made was the power of imagery. Seems obvious, but images sell food products. Way better than boring text on a board ever could. So Starbucks now uses tempting imagery to draw your eyes to the most profitable items on their menu. If it's highlighted with a picture, you can bet it's making them money. I did some recon at a local Starbucks and you can see they have a separate little board plugging the things that they really want you to see first. Again, on any fast food menu, pay attention to the items that are featured with large, attractive images. These pictures aren't just there to look cute, they're there to nudge you into buying one of these more profitable items. According to QSR Magazine again, these changes resulted in the drive-through driving more than 50% of net sales for Starbucks in the last quarter of 2021. So as you can see, even though all of these little behavioral hacks and tiny nudges have been tiny, they are clearly worth the investment for food companies. I also feel like we can't leave this section without me mentioning the original fast food menu hack, the combo meal. Originally invented by Burger Chef in the early 60s, the first combo meal was called the Triple Threat and included a burger, fries, and a drink for just 45 cents. Now, unfortunately for Burger Chef, McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, and the rest of them were able to run with their idea to the point that even though Burger Chef is now long gone, the combo meal lives on and has actually become synonymous with fast food. When you go to a fast food restaurant these days, you're probably ordering a combo meal. And if you're like most people, you don't even consider doing anything other than that. By combining these three things, fast food chains have made the burger fry drink grouping the default option. The upsell is now the main thing that everyone buys without even considering whether or not they're thirsty or whether or not they really wanted fries with that. Defaulting is another bias. It's one of the most popular behavioral nudges employed by people and businesses trying to change your behavior. The default effect states that people tend to opt for or remain with the default choice even in the face of better options. The combo meal is a big example, but probably the most common one used by businesses is pre-ticking boxes for you. They make the opt-in the default knowing that you're unlikely to opt out. The way these behavioral science techniques work is by bypassing your thinking mind and speaking directly toward the more automatic part of the brain. Meaning that fast food companies prefer to do the thinking for you. And they do so by appealing directly to the more impulsive side of the brain with behavioral science. The food companies haven't even gotten started yet. Technology is revolutionizing the way drive-throughs digital menu screens are capable of influencing your behavior. 
In 2019, McDonald's spent more than $300 million buying a company that specializes in AI suggestive selling on the order screen at their drive throughs What is this dynamic menu really going to offer? It's really going to, I think, a way to try to get you to buy more food, which is what McDonald's wants to do. Currently, this new AI technology has mostly been used to leverage historical sales data and local weather and traffic patterns in order to predict and pitch the add-on items that are most likely to be chosen at that particular time and day. For example, the digital menu could quickly switch to suggesting ice cream or a frosty drink on a hot day or warmed baked goods and hot drinks on a cold day. They're using tech to kind of customize this and get you to buy more. They know so much about who we are, where we are, especially if you're using the app. So it's really kind of all about getting you to spend more money. And again, seemingly tiny changes like this are extremely effective at driving sales and thus getting you to tack on an extra 250 calories and two or three bucks to your order. It's no surprise that within months, it was reported that this investment was already generating larger orders from their customers. But this is just the beginning of the way AI and technology are helping to sell us more food. The next step and the step that many are working on rolling out according to QSR is leveraging your private personal data to pitch you in extremely customized ways. AI and big data are quote, providing opportunities for the food and beverage industry to influence customer behavior in ways that are more intelligent, immersive, and engaging than ever before. This paper, use of artificial intelligence to enable dark nudges by transnational food and beverage companies, analysis of company documents, claims that according to internal documents, leading global food and beverage companies have been using AI to influence consumer behavior since as early as 2014. And some of their methods include facial recognition, social listening, and license plate profiling. Multiple fast food restaurants are currently trialing cameras in the lot that will read your license plate as you pull into the drive-thru. This is called automatic license plate recognition or ALPR. This technology will allow McDonald's to serve you totally customized AI-based food recommendations based on your license plate number. They'll be able to use data about your previous purchase information to help sell you additional items that you didn't intend on buying. In the future, the menu you see will be completely unique to you and your unique preferences, using your previous purchase data and so much more. Here's how that could go down. It's 8.23 a.m. on a Wednesday morning, and you're in the drive-thru line picking up a coffee from McDonald's before the workday begins. Just a coffee this morning, you think? But as you wait in line, the digital billboard beside your window quickly rolls over over to see a sizzling McGriddle value deal. You normally just order a coffee, but you vaguely recall ordering a McGriddle and a hash brown on a Wednesday morning, just like this one about a month ago. Then it's finally your turn to pull up an order. You order your coffee and the voice informs you that today there's a value deal just for you. You can get your coffee free if you purchase a McGriddle and a hash brown. At first you decline and continue placing your order, but McDonald's AI knows that just by asking you one more time, they are 11% more likely to make the sale. So the AI prompts you again, and this time you think, ah, what the heck? And boom, McDonald's has turned your $1 coffee order into six bucks, and you've just eaten 800 unplanned calories. Personalizing the menu board is going to allow fast food companies so much precision and marketing to people. Rather than guessing at the add-ons that you're most likely to buy like they do now, fast food companies will be able to use data about you to pitch things that you specifically are most likely to buy, making it much, much more likely that you will increase your order size. Now, the license plate thing is one way to store and track your personal data, but it's really only the tip of the iceberg. The future of the drive-thru is dystopian if we all don't learn to act less impulsively. Or swear off drive throughs that's an option too. Because the future of the drive through and fast food in general is the apps. You can tell this by how hard they're working to get you to download them. McDonald's has them taking up prime real estate all over their menus and ad campaigns, which indicates that the app is extremely valuable to them. These fast food apps pack a lot into them, but their main purpose is to find creative ways of extracting and exploiting your personal data as well as location. But I'm not even fully sure what the full potential of these apps are, but let's just say that the future for the fast food industry is bright with this new invasive tool in their arsenal. The app could literally be its own entire video, so I'll leave that for another time. But as we've seen, dark nudges are simple, tiny tweaks to your environment that alter your behavior in predictable ways. And each one of these individual nudges on their own are not really a big deal. Each one of them stands to only modestly affect your behavior. Certain nudges are more effective than others, and certain nudges may even 
backfire and not work at all on you. But as you've seen with drive throughs it's a laid out plan. You're being manipulated before you even hit the lots. And fast food companies are not the only people using behavioral science to get you to behave in a way that undermines your best interests. We live in unprecedented times where the entire world and its algorithms are trying to alter your behavior. Corporations are trying to exploit the mindless, impulsive parts of us to get us to eat more, scroll more, and buy more. And the thing is, over the coming years, with this technology getting more and more powerful, if you don't consciously choose your life and your behavior, it will absolutely be chosen for you. We're living in a world where corporations know us better than we know ourselves. The richest corporations have spent the, what, last 15 years collecting sensitive personal data and using this data to learn the ways to alter our behavior and the way that best benefits them. But research shows that awareness, just being aware that there are psychological triggers at play can help lessen their pull. So you're welcome. And if you're unaware of how the majority of our food supply is made, you need to watch this video on ultra processed food. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.